All right, guys, let's finish off this series by taking a look back with the postmortem for the Run Forest project. Essentially, putting all my lessons learned in one convenient place and releasing this project in source code at the end. So, let's begin by addressing the elephant in the room. We set out to train Forest to become the Any Course Running Master, completing all five courses in the campaign, but we failed. But why did we fail? Well, here's my best analysis on the situation. After doing hours and hours of training for this project, I think there are seven possible things that could be to blame. Thing number one, time. I think time was a pretty big factor at fault here. While training the six forests, the whole time I kept thinking about how much time should I put in to improve each forest. Like when is enough training enough training? And I won't lie. With almost all of them, I felt like I stopped training them a bit too soon. Obviously, the reason for this is because I had a self-imposed video deadline, but still yet, it happened, and I legit do think that it played a role in our failure. So, noted for future projects. Number two is training and not training what I should or shouldn't be. I didn't realize this in the moment, but training for us for challenges that he'd never faced in the campaign mode and not training for us for some challenges that he will face, I think was not only a waste of time, but also confused for us in some situations. Say he faces a situation that he's never seen before. So he either doesn't know what to do or does what he would do in another situation, both of which are likely to end up hitting the wall. I thought maybe training for specific challenges facing the campaign mode would give us better results, and so I tried it. Twice. By first training on a basic course, then immediately training that Forrest on campaign after, and only train further when they got stuck in the campaign, Forrest Valley Victorian and Forrest Focus were able to get to course number four. Yes, four, we're on course four. All right, let's see if we can go all the way. Okay, this is, uh, I don't think he's ever been in this situation before. Forrest, Forrest, yes, don't go up. Yes, oh my God. Forrest, please turn right, turn right, turn right. Oh my. Oh my God. Oh my God. What is he gonna do? No! Why? Why? But not much further than that, which is a great segue into our next possible problem to blame. Thing number three, the neural network structure. I honestly think this might be one of the biggest things to blame. After trying to train Forest Valley Victorian and Forest Focused, I was getting stuck having to train Forest on the same challenges. Forest would be able to get around circle intersections, but then we'd get stuck on turning sharp corners. I trained him to turn sharp corners, and now he'd get stuck on circle intersections. It was almost as if Forest couldn't remember both at the same time, which leads me to believe that he needed a better brain. But unfortunately, I will not be testing for this to find out. It's only a lesson learned for future projects. Thing number four, overfitting. I think the Forest Dedicated, Forest Gump, and Forest Calculated were interesting experiments, but in the end was the wrong way to go about solving this problem because I think I was overfitting for each training session. Again, what overfitting means is learning something in too much detail opposed to understanding a general rule. And I think with Forest Dedicated, I overfit him for so long on basic courses before introducing some real course challenges that it made it hard for him to overcome real challenges when it came time to. Almost as if he was so deep in the trenches of understanding the basic of courses that there was almost no return from that. But I will give it to him. The Forest Dedicated tactic was good enough to complete most courses, but the any course running master he was not. With Forrest Gump, as expected, this was just flat out a bad tactic. I made two to three really difficult courses, and I was willing to accept the mastering of any of them, but Forrest failed every single course. And again, I think with more time, eventually I would have been able to successfully train Forrest Gump, but sometimes we just need to know when enough is enough. Besides time, I think this was also primarily due to one other thing. With more difficult courses, the amount of possible solutions that would do what I was asking for, which again was to complete the track with two laps, decreases dramatically. Now, for the Forest Calculated Tactic, which, as you know from Part 3, gave us the best results, I actually think the overfitting issue gave Forest Calculated an advantage. Merging overfit thought processes that specialize at their own challenges proved to be a good tactic. But, as you also know, neither the slice or random crossover function could complete the campaign mode. And I think the reason for this is because though in theory merging a bunch of specialized thought processes sounds like a good idea, it's a bit hard to determine if those thought processes really specialized in what I thought they specialized in. Not to mention the crazy variation that comes with the choice of the course that is used to merge them on. So 
yeah, <laughs> this is the tactic that I probably had the least control over, but it did pretty well for itself. So I'm a proud father. Problem number five, course variation complexity. I for sure underestimated how difficult training force was gonna be. The course builder added a dimension of complexity that I did not realize at first. And with this complexity, I was able to create challenges that my fitness function was not able to handle. For example, going in an endless circle is hands down the best thing for Forrest to do because all we said is, Forrest, now listen, we will reward you for staying away from walls as long as you can. And Forrest goes, Okay, like this. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, there is no penalty if Forrest goes backwards or takes a long route and things like this. Behavior that we may not want to reward gets rewarded anyway, thus making training a lot harder for us. But note for the next project. Don't be lazy, bro. Problem number six. Hex versus parallel line courses. I originally planned to make a parallel line course builder, but that was gonna take some really good time to build the tool. And so I built a temporary hex shaped course builder instead just for testing. Then I got hit with the classic software developer logic. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so the hex course builder stayed. But I don't know, this might've actually made training a bit harder for Forrest. Maybe parallel lines would've been easier for Forrest to make sense of the courses, but who knows? Noted for future projects. Problem number seven, performance issues. I don't know why, but the game would sometimes lag up from time to time, even just with a single Forrest on screen and almost nothing else using my CPU. And when the game lagged, Forrest wouldn't get an accurate real-time read on the course and would crash in the walls because the lag is giving him wrong data. Granted, I've done absolutely zero optimization for this game and it didn't happen all that often. I still feel like it shouldn't be as laggy as it randomly sometimes got. And when I ran my screen cap software OBS, Forget about it. It clogged up my CPU and running force was almost impossible. And this is something that we're for sure gonna have to be on the lookout for for future projects as well. But despite all this, I still don't think it's impossible to train a force to beat the campaign. I just think that you have to put a little more time than I did and get your creative juices flowing while training. In fact, I'd love it if one of you guys took on this challenge. If any of you guys can beat the campaign mode and send me proof, I might send the first person a little consolation prize. So that's it guys, our first official machine learning game is officially done and it's actually out now, as well as the open source. And you know, it honestly surprises me how few machine learning games have been released to this day. Carl Sims released his Evolved Virtual Creatures demo 24 years ago and I still can't tell you one notable machine learning game released since then. So what the hell, we need to change this guys. Despite the millions of funky, fresh, innovative ways that machine learning can be used, I'm gonna make it my prime objective this year to release at least one fully fledged machine learning game with enough quality for a Steam release. If no one's gonna work to make that exemplary machine learning game and carry on Carl Sims legacy, then damn it guys, I guess that it's up to us. And I hope that you all enjoyed the Run For Us project as well as all the other machine learning projects that I plan to do this year. Now. Let the machine learning games begin. Guys, this is gonna be a very exciting year full of crazy software projects, I promise. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to be notified for when I put up new videos. Please leave a like on this video and share it with a friend. Doing all that helps this channel grow a lot more than you know. All right guys, that's all from me. I will see you next week and remember to always feed your curiosity. Whoa, crap.